Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. In this video, we're going to talk some Modern Warfare 3. And whether or not it's going to be any good, <laughs> let's go talk about it. <laughs> okay, minions. So I haven't done a video like this in a while where I'm basically just going to talk at you about some things that I'm thinking about while I put some gameplay and stuff in the background. But what I want to talk about in this video is Modern Warfare 3, because I've heard uh, leaks and rumors as well as some official information about Modern Warfare 3, so I figured I'd just share my thoughts on it, maybe get some input on what you guys think about the upcoming game. For me, there is a really big, like, worry based on what happened with Modern Warfare 2, that Modern Warfare 3 was just gonna be, like, more of worse, whereas, if you guys have been around here, you've seen that I've said Modern Warfare 2 is basically just a worse version of Modern Warfare 2019, which is my favorite Call of Duty of all time. And I was worried that Modern Warfare 3 would probably just go more down that route of taking the thing, the, the enhancements from Modern Warfare 2019 to Modern Warfare 2 and going even worse with that. Um, it, that may still be the case, but let's start talking about the individual things that I've heard and how I think that they'll impact whether or not it's going to get better or worse. So first, let's start out with how we kind of are getting fucked by Modern Warfare 3. Now, those of you who pay attention to some of the industry news probably remember about a year ago or something like that where Activision was saying, you know what, we're not going to be doing the annual Call of Duty releases going forward. We're going to support these games for a longer amount of time, maybe a two-year cycle. Um, that was the rumor slash, I think, I don't know how official it was, but everybody was basically talking about Modern Warfare 2 was just going to be supported for two years. And for year two, they were going to just do basically an expansion where they added the, you know, more onto the Modern Warfare 2 campaign, and they were going to add a bunch of new maps. The rumor was it was going to be all of the 2009 Modern Warfare 2 maps that they were going to sell as basically like an expansion. And you would, you know, basically, if you had Modern Warfare 2, you would pay for this expansion, and it would add a bunch of new content, and that would support the game through year two without you having to buy a new game. After the better part of that year, Activision abandoned that idea and just said, okay, we're going to be release releasing a full game. And so let's talk a little bit about how that kind of screwed us, because what they really were going to basically do was take the Modern Warfare 2 game, the core game, and just add a bunch of content to it for year two. Which, and if they were selling that as an expansion, they'd be lucky to be able to price it at 40 or 50 bucks, right? I, thinking historically from DLC costs for big expansions, you'd probably think about 40 bucks, although with everything being a little bit more expensive these days. They might push for 50. They wouldn't be able to get away with 60 because most people still think of that as a full price game, even though new full price games are becoming $70 much more regularly, which is what Modern Warfare 3 is going to be, is a full game that's going to cost you $70 right out of the gate. So from that standpoint, it's kind of like, well, we're getting fucked because guess what? It's going to be the stuff that we were told about for the expansion for Modern Warfare 2. It's going to be an extension to the Modern Warfare 2 campaign. It's going to be all of the Modern Warfare 2 uh, 2009 launch maps, which I am excited about. But it's going to be 16 reworked maps um, as part of the launch for the game. Um, and I think I heard that maybe four or something new maps, um, which we'll talk about that in the good stuff going, you know, ahead of us. But... But what was going to be an expansion, we're essentially getting sold as a full fat game, which means that they're going to make a lot more money off of it because they're selling it full price. So we're kind of getting fucked. But I will say, I think that's actually probably a good thing that is being released as a full game. And here's why. So a lot of the core elements of Modern Warfare 2, if you guys have seen my recent videos, or mainly I made one entire video specifically talking about everything that is wrong with Modern Warfare 2 in my mind. A lot of those things are core to the game, to the point where if they had just released an expansion, it would have been really difficult for them to rework some of the core fundamental elements of the game, like the time box perks, and like the core maps, right? You couldn't really eliminate the core maps from Modern Warfare 2 out of the rotation if you sold an expansion to it, unless you separated that playlist, right? So by releasing it as a full game, from what I understand, they're replacing time box perks with a gear system, so essentially you'll choose like vests and stuff like that that will operate as perks, like giving you extra tactical slots or blah 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 blah, whatever. So they should be getting rid of the time box perk system, which is a big improvement. They, I've heard that they're actually um, going to be increasing movement, which at first kind of makes me feel like, uh, because it's the jumping corners and stuff like that. 
Um, the, the crazy movement that is a big part of, I think, what's been wrong with Call of Duty over the last couple of years. That said, a lot of the reason why people are jumping, jump peeking every corner is because is because strafe speed is low and because the TTK is so fast, you die so quickly, you kind of need every advantage to be able to do that, right? So being able to quickly move around a corner and peek and attack someone is really hard, if not impossible, to do because of the fast TTK and stuff. So leaping around that corner is how you kind of get some advantage on that. So maybe by having this increased movement speed, there will be less of that need to just jump around like a lunatic because you can just move more quickly naturally. Um, that could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, it's hard to tell. Also, they're bumping the base health to 150 from 100 is what I've heard, which also could be a good thing. It could, it could mean nothing, right? Because if they just make every weapon 50% more powerful and the TTK doesn't change. But I get the impression that if I'm thinking of it mathematically, right, there's two main reasons you would increase the base health pool. One is it gives you more options for balancing. Since you have a larger base pool of health, you've got more fidelity in how your modifications to uh, bullet damage impact your time to kill. So whereas if your base of health is 100 and you add five um, damage points onto a single bullet, then that increases your time to kill a lot more significantly than if you do that in a 150 base health pool without doing something like using fractional numbers, right? Where the base damage is like 2.5 instead of five, right? So mathematically, it's a computer. You could use decimals values to do the same thing. But considering the Call of Duty is always kind of like done base numbers for those things, integers, it makes sense that you could increase that base health pool and it gives you more fidelity in balancing weapons, which they could still fuck up weapon balance, but that could be a good thing. It'll be interesting to see how that impacts the weapons that are coming forward from Modern Warfare 2, because they're bringing all of the weapons and cosmetics from Modern Warfare 2 forward into Modern Warfare 3. Going back to that concept that it was originally going to be an expansion, so it's all compatible in engine, so they're just letting people keep it. I don't dislike that, other than the fact there's a lot of stupid, ridiculous cosmetics that people can buy, like now you can be Nicki Minaj, and so it's like it's not bad enough seeing like cats and rats running around or diamond skinned people or fucking Snoop Dogg. Now you got Nicki Minaj. And... Anyway, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how they rebalance the Modern Warfare 2 weapons in that larger health pool. What that tells me is there's an opportunity for them to to increase slow down the time to kill, which is desperately needed in Call of Duty. They need to slow down the time to kill. Modern Warfare 2 is way too fast. Vanguard and Cold War were way too fast. Modern Warfare 2019 was slightly too fast. It was still good, which is part of why Modern Warfare 2019 is my favorite game in the series. The original Black Ops is probably the best Call of Duty that ever nailed time to kill. If they go back to Black Ops 1 time to kill, I think they'll be in a really good spot. So there's the opportunity for that. So I'm kind of optimistic about that. Um, what else? Um, yeah, let's go back and talk about the, the maps. At launch, the word on the street, and this isn't, I don't think, official official yet, um, but these link leaks from these sources tend to be pretty reliable, is day one it's going to launch with all 16 base multiplayer maps from Modern Warfare 2. Afghan, Quarry, basically the DLC ones are the ones they won't be adding, and, I th and there were some good ones in there, but honestly... I talked about this recently in my Modern Warfare 2 2009 video. Every single Modern Warfare 2 2009 map was good. Some were better than others, right? Some were a little bit frustrating um, at times, you know, like the big map like Derail was one of those where it was like, I'm not a huge fan of that map. It's really big. Tack insertions were really kind of important on that, the way that I played that map. But I didn't hate it. It wasn't one of those where I wanted to skip that map every time it came up in the rotation. And I've talked about that recently with the new Modern Warfare 2. A lot of their maps are just like, I won't play them. Like, I just will back out. And there hasn't really been a Call of Duty game that's been like that before. With the exception of Shipment. Shipment is cancer. So unless I'm deliberately going into Shipment intentionally to, like, grind camos or something like that, I will back out of Shipment most of the time. Um, but throughout the history of Call of Duty, there hasn't been a ton of maps where I've just been like, I just won't play this at all. There have been bad maps. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm not upset about the fact that almost all, if not all of the maps that we get starting out on Modern Warfare 3 are going to be classic Modern Warfare 2 maps. 
They could do like recently did, they released Strike from Call of Duty 4 in Modern Warfare 2 recently, and which is a good map in COD 4. Um, not necessarily one of the best maps, but a good map. And with the way that Modern Warfare 2 has its system set up, it didn't play nearly as well. I got kind of frustrated by it. I don't. I wouldn't say it's a bad map in Modern Warfare 2, but the point being, it's possible that they could bring all of these great Modern Warfare 2 maps into Modern Warfare 3, and they could still suck because of how they balance the gameplay if the movement's different, stuff like that. So time will tell, but I'm not fundamentally mad at that because the Modern Warfare 2 maps were great. And honestly, I've been kind of wanting a Modern Warfare 2 2009 remaster where they just take what was good about Modern Warfare 2 and fix all this shit that was broken, which if you think about what they did with COD 4 remastered, they kept it really true to the original, which I think is a good thing. So they couldn't really remaster Modern Warfare 2 and do that, right? If they brought Modern Warfare 2 forward, they would still need to leave like shotgun secondaries, one-man army noob tubes. Like that was, if you remaster Modern Warfare 2, you gotta leave it mostly intact. Although luckily, we don't necessarily need that right now because the matchmaking for those old games is back online, so you can just go play Modern Warfare 2. Um, by having this in Modern Warfare 3, they can, from the ground up, build, hopefully, a set of systems in the game that aren't broken like they were back in Modern Warfare 2, and then still leverage those good maps. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, considering they're carrying forward all the old weapons and adding all new weapons, it'll be interesting to see how obscure they get with weaponry, right? Because we've already got M4s and M16s and G30... Wait, is there a G36 in Modern Warfare 2 yet? I don't think there is. Maybe. Didn't they add it in one of the recent ones? That's Battlefield. Battlefield 2042 just recently added. Anyway, I love the G36. Ah, we see that come back. We'll probably see an ACR come back, I would guess, considering it's going to be Modern Warfare 2 maps. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with the weapons. Um, but I'm excited, because I like weapon variety, to have a game that's going to have all of the... Honestly, one of the best things about the current Modern Warfare 2 is this big plethora of weapons. Modern Warfare 3, add on to that. So you can just have tons and tons of choice for what to use for weapons. So I think that'll be good too. And one of the other things that I've heard is they'll go back to traditional radar, which I haven't... It's been hard for me to kind of conceptually understand the impact it's had on Modern Warfare 2, where if you have a silenced weapon, you don't necessarily stay off of the radar unless you also have Ghost. Um... Which means that for all of Modern Warfare 2, I just haven't really used suppressors because if they don't just always keep me off the radar and the way that they rebalance those time box perks, like Quick Fix I think was in the same box as Ghost and Quick Fix is so much more valuable than Ghost in my mind, in my playstyle, the way that I play the game, that there was no point in running Ghost and therefore there was basically no point in running suppressors and so I just didn't. Um, so with Modern Warfare 3, Going back to that, kind of in my mind, the meta of how you played Modern Warfare 2019 was every weapon needed to have a suppressor on it. Just because it kept you off the radar, it was really powerful. It was a really good thing to have. Um, so we'll see how that goes in Modern Warfare 3. Hopefully it's more of that return to form where hopefully we'll still get a quick fix. I do like quick fix. It was my go-to through all of Modern Warfare 2019. If not, whatever. I'll figure out my new perk loadout um, for Modern Warfare 3 and go forward with it. So that fix to the radar... Um, I think is going to probably be a good thing. So I've talked for a decent amount here already, but honestly, there's not a whole lot more to touch about because, again, we're still learning about Modern Warfare 3. There's going to be a beta coming up. So I guess the way that I'll summarize all of this is, in a way, we're really kind of getting fucked by Modern Warfare 3 because it's not an expansion. It's a full game, so they're going to charge us more for it. But I think, ultimately, that means that they have an opportunity to actually make it a lot better than they could if they just expanded on what Modern Warfare 2 currently is, which is... Pretty busted, in my opinion. So, I'm optimistic. I am, unfortunately, because this is the type of Call of Duty that's in my wheelhouse, it's the modern setting, especially since it's going to be in that Modern Warfare 2019, Modern Warfare 2, like, timeline, modern weapons and all that. I'm definitely going to be playing the shit out of it. Um, just the way it's going to be. Unless they... What remains to be seen is whether or not it's going to be... At moving towards the direction of Modern Warfare 2019, it could potentially go more in that direction and could take the fundamentals of what's in the current Call of Duty engine and could be the best Call of Duty ever made. Or it could go the other way from Modern Warfare 2 and it could be one of the worst Call of Duties ever made. Um, so I can't predict which it's going to be. But based on what I've heard about it so far, 
I'm leaning more towards it going more towards the model for 2019 original Call of Duty Black Ops side of things where hopefully they're going to loosen up the time to kill a little bit, make it to where cheesy mechanics aren't as much of a core part of the game and have not shitty maps. So we will see what happens. Let me know what you guys think. I know there's a lot of skepticism out there and honestly, we've been burned by Call of Duty so many times that it's no surprise that it might just turn out to be dog shit and it would make perfect sense if you didn't want to take a risk on it. But I'll be in pre-ordering it. I'll be in the beta. I'll be playing at least for a while the shit out of it to unlock weapons and, and rank them up and stuff like that. And who knows, maybe I'll get to the point where I kind of give up on it like I pretty much have on Modern Warfare 2 now. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed my rambling rant, you guys can leave me a like. If you didn't, you can leave me a dislike. If you're new around here, subscribe, become one of my minions, and we're just going to have fun, like, playing whatever it is. If, if fucking Modern Warfare 3 sucks, we'll find something else fun to play. I'll go drive around the Barber Dream Car some more. Whatever. Uh, if you guys want to some, watch something interesting that's totally not like this, check out the video I just recently did where I'm teaching my daughter how to drive using Gran Turismo. It's got some great moments about, it'll help you learn how to drive more in like sim racers and in the real world, and it'll watch you see a teenage girl get extremely irritated with her father. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one.